Hi artist friends, I'm Blake and if you're anything like me, you just have some days where you don't feel like making art, but know you should be doing it just to keep the momentum going. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to do that by prepping sketchbook pages. So yesterday I prepped a bunch of pages and I absolutely had the most fun. I spent hours down there. This one is an example of a piece of paper that I worked on yesterday. I laid down some gesso and then just washed some colors of paint on there. This one, I created a texture. I went in with a white Posca pen and I just drew letters. It's fun to just be able to fill up a sketchbook, even if you're not making gorgeous art in it. This is when I was actually starting to get warmed up. I just layered down some pink background and then I was drawing some shapes and I had a lot of fun doing this. This one I used the fiber paste and it has a really interesting texture that's kind of rough and bumpy and it's like, it feels like handmade paper. Another thing that I did yesterday, the first thing I did actually was to just make a list of objects that I thought would be fun to draw. And I also started a Pinterest board called Shapes and I only have a few things on here right now. My husband made this for me for a present and he had the box made. He designed these idea cards for me. Do something boring, expand the palette, Try a different tool, change nothing. <laughs> and he painted these really nice textures on it. On each one is a different texture, a different pattern. I have a lot of art supplies that I don't use very much. I have my favorites. These are not um, very expensive and I, I like the hardbound book sometimes when I'm keeping a sketchbook because the pages don't rip out and the pages aren't thick they're just regular thin drawing paper. I use gesso on some of the pages and gesso helps me with some of the materials that I want to use. I like to buy brushes and some of them I don't use a lot. This one I got at Ross. This was just like a really cheap set and I don't use them so I wanted to try them. These gouache paints this travel watercolor kit, cheapo acrylic paints that aren't fabulous. Karen Dosh, I have a whole bunch of colors. High flow acrylic paints that are very liquidy. They're almost like, I guess you could call them acrylic inks. And I have these alcohol inks, which are so much fun to play with, but I don't play with them very often. So those, we're gonna use those today. These need a non-porous surface because otherwise they'll just soak right into a, a porous surface like paper. And these Marabou art crayons, I do use these quite a bit, but we can play with these. A friend came by and brought me these inks as a gift. She said they're from the 70s, I think. You can tell from the label. <laughs> they're just sort of warm colored inks. We can play with those. This is another tool that I have lying downstairs that I don't use very often. It's basically like goopy paper that when it dries, gives a really interesting papery texture. You can use crackle paste. You can use um, all kinds of textures on these pages. And this is just to get your, just to get started when you don't really know what to do. And even though you're not actually like creating art at this moment, you're, at least you're doing something. This is the blending solution. Butterscotch. This is Sienna. And that leaves just a really fun, beautiful texture for you to go in later and paint on top of. 
And then what I like to do is go over it with some zinc white. And the zinc white is very transparent. So I'm gonna use some of this blending solution. Now the surface is really uh, non-porous because I have that layer of acrylic paint on there as well as the gesso. And if you don't want that to bleed, of course, you've got your fixative. You can use. If you don't have zinc white, you can use acrylic white paint and thin it out. I have some of this flash white. You can also do a very similar effect to the uh, zinc. And you can just keep going for a really whitewashed effect. Here's another gessoed page, and I'm going to try to keep the palette a little uh, less colorful this time. Sometimes that's hard for me. So these are water soluble. I'm just going to go in and kind of color the page. And this is a turkey feather I found in my neighborhood. Let's see what happens. This is acrylic ink or high flow acrylic and I'm gonna use some white and just drop it on. I let that dry. Now I'm really curious to see what my watercolors will look like on this fiber paste.
a little dropper. The texture of this feels so great. It's very gritty. One of the things I like to do once I have that is take some of these chalks and layer them on top. The chalk really picks up the texture of the material underneath. This page is not gessoed. So now I have five pages in my sketchbook that are not just blank white pages that when I'm feeling the inspiration for, I can just go play on. Let me give you an example of what some of that play will look like. I like these shapes because they're fun. So let's try a bow tie. This is a Derwent uh, ink tense, so it reacts with water. So I'm just gonna spray a little water on there.
What was fun about that is that I didn't feel a lot of pressure to produce a beautiful final piece of art. Um, and it was just really relaxing as well. What's great about this, if you want to just go in and play, you can just go in and take a Posca pen and uh, make some marks. I have a big bin of pens here. You can use markers. These Derwent pencils are nice. This one has a really dark color in the background that we made. And this is perfect for a Posca pen. I think I'm running out of ink on this guy, but there we go. Even if you don't feel like doing the designs on top, you have this ready for you for when you do feel inspired or you don't feel inspired and you just wanna make shapes. Um, this one is the one with that we did that has the paper fiber texture. Um, but let's say I wanna go in with one of these uh, objects. Um, we can do a, a donut. Maybe we do a small donut. Maybe we just do donuts on this page. But it just makes a really nice surface for you to go back on and play for later. You can take some chalks and draw on them. You can do your shapes. And you can write phrases. 